Karen Hodgins, Creative Gel with Geometry Family Math Night Kit. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my latest Family Math Night Collaborative Project, the Totem Pole. And you can see the fabulous results um, of this project and how creative um, students got in designing um, their section of the Totem Pole. So, um, as you know, Totem Poles are sculptures um, in the shape of a pole um, made up of symbols or figures used to communicate um, stories or events or really anything that was important in the in, um, lives of the indigenous peoples of um, Northwestern United States, uh, British Columbia, Canada, and Alaska. Um, totem poles are not religious symbols. Um, they are purely artistic endeavors um, with a lot of symmetry and that's where we come in. Um, I thought it would be super fun to create uh, collaborative totem poles um, and then sneak in some symmetry measurement and a little bit of fractions. Okay, so I'm going to describe um, the project to you and then how to put the totem pole together. Uh, but first, you're going to need to gather a whole bunch of materials and prepare the, um, the strips um, that they're going to be using. So um, let's talk about the strips first. So I created, I used um, strips that were 24 inches by 6 inches, and that 24 inches um, is going to um, come become really important here in just a minute. Um, but I created the strips out of regular poster board, which is 22 inches by 28 inches, and I was able to to cut out three strips um, for each poster board. And you're going to have a little bit of um, uh, poster board left over at the end, which is perfect because that's what you're going to cut up into smaller pieces like this. And this is what the participants are going to use to create their fabulous designs. Okay, you're also going to need um, some white glue um, and um, paper clips. And I use the large paper clips, that's a really important part of it. Um, you're going to need pencils. Um, and this is cardboard. It's really thick cardboard. That's really important. It's um, it's five and a half inches by one inch, and they're going to be using this. Um, they're going to be gluing it onto their um, section, um, so it's really important that it's thick. Now, what I discovered um, later is that um, I could have used these um, uh, craft sticks, but here's the important part. If you decide to use the craft sticks, they're six inches long. So when your participants use these, I'll show you how to do that, um, it's really important that they put them on um, their section um, perfectly. Otherwise, you're going to have some sticking up over the edge of their um, section and it's going to be harder to put it together. So you can either cut the cardboard into five and a half inches or use the craft stick, but just make sure that um, they put it on there real carefully. Okay, you're also going to need um, tape measures. I had this kind of tape measure and I also had um, this these kind of tape measures on the table for them. Um, I, I provided rulers in case they wanted to use that to create their, uh, be real careful in their lines with their design. Uh, you need scissors, obviously. Um, glue sticks, really important. Um, and then you can, um, I had these uh, reflection mirrors. You don't need these for this project. Um, um, but if you have them, we, we have these in our Gentleman with Geometry Family Math Night Kit, so you get five of them in, in the kit. But um, if you don't have them, like I said, you can do it without that, but they're kind of fun to use. The kids really like it. You're also going to need uh, the table tent. So this is um, going to uh, list, give the directions for the participants in order to complete um, their totem poles. And because you may or may not have the reflection mirrors, um, I created two different um, table tents for you, one to use with the reflection mirrors and one that you can use if you don't have the reflection mirrors. And then you're going to need the totem pole activity. This is where I'm going to tie in um, some of the math. And with this, you're going to want to provide some um, scrap paper so that they can do some um, number crunching um, and drawing on here if they need to. Um, oh, and the final thing that you're going to need is um, clear um, tape in these dispensers because you're going to have them um, along the tables. And while, while I'm talking about the tables, because this project requires a lot of space per um, individual, I decided at our family math event that I, that I was going to put down two of the long cafeteria tables 
for this project instead of the one that I normally use. Um, and it worked out perfect because all evening, um, both of those tables were pretty full. So um, you may want to consider that in your room setup for your event. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through the steps of, oh, the final thing, you're going to need some um, strong uh, packing tape. Um, and this is going to come in when you actually put the, the totem poles together. Okay, so now I'm going to go through the steps of actually doing the project. So um, it tells you what a totem pole here is the top of a pole made up of symbols or figures to communicate stories or events. And we talked about that. Okay, and step number one is using one of the 24 inch by 6 inch colored poster board strips. Measure, then draw two lines dividing the strip into thirds lengthwise. Okay, so I'm going to take one of these strips, okay, and this is where those tape measures come in, and this is where that 24 inches that I talked about was really important because I wanted it to be um, easy for them to divide 24, whatever number it was I was going to use, into three um, sections easily. So 24 divided by 3 would be 8 inches, so each one of the sections is going to be 8 inches. And you can see here, I just did it for you um, as a sample, those dark lines there. We're using pencils, but I wanted you to be able to see that. Okay, so those are my eight inch sections. But then I wanted to be sure um, that this middle section, because the next thing that they're gonna do is take this middle section and divide that in half. So I wanted to make sure that they could easily divide um, the eight inches into um, those two, obviously, um, four inch sections. And then it says here, um, okay, um, use the pencil to, to divide. Okay, so it says that you will be designing in the center rectangle. So it clearly shows them that this is where their design is going to be. And then in step number two, it says use the pencil to divide the center rectangle in half, which I've done there. Um, this is your line of symmetry. So everything that they do from here on out is going to be reflected along that line. And by the way, um, the, the, um, the table tents and the uh, math activity tents um, and the lesson plans for this activity can be found on our website at familymathlight.com under the classroom products section in case you want the written version of this. Okay, so then um, step number three says using the smaller pieces okay, of construction paper, scissors, and glue sticks, um, create a design that has mirror bilateral symmetry one line of symmetry. If you like, you can use two pieces of paper to cut two shapes at the same time that are congruent, exactly the same. So in other words, you can take two pieces like this, put one over the other, and then cut out your shape. And when you do that, you'll end up with two exact, I did a sample here, two exact um, pieces. Um, you'll find that participants will simply take this, fold it in half, it's the same idea of getting the two exact um, pieces there. So, um, and then you can see how I'm sneaking in some math vocabulary. I'd rather got congruent on here, and then I tell them what that is exactly the same. We've got a bilateral symmetry, and mirror symmetry, and rectangle for the real little guys. Um, okay, so then the next thing is, um, okay, to check your design for symmetry, use the reflection mirror by placing the mirror on the line of symmetry look through the mirror, both sides should match. And then I have a little sample there of what it should look like. Again, this is obviously gonna be the one where you um, have uh, the reflection mirror. So basically what's gonna happen here is, let me take one of my circles and I'll put it um, right here. Now if you use those reflection mirrors, these are kind of fun, um, you can place that reflection mirror right on that, whoops, I'm on the wrong side here, right on that line of symmetry, just like that, right? So you take your um, glue stick, you put glue on here, you put this where you want it. Now, if you look through the reflection mirror on this side, okay, um, actually, if you look through on this side, you'll see this reflected on this side, and you'll know exactly where to place um, that other part so that it is perfectly symmetrical. It's really kind of fun to do that. Now, I mentioned that you're going to be using um, the glue stick. And I also told you earlier that you're going to need white glue. It's really important at this point that they use um, the glue stick to glue on oops, their pieces. Um, the white glue, what happens is when you lift up um, your design, 
um, if they put too much white glue on it, sometimes those little guys use a lot of white glue, it'll start to slide and then it will distort their symmetry. So really important that they use um, the glue stick for this part. The white glue will come in just a little bit later on. Okay, so um, once they have their design on there, um, number, step number five says, when your design is finished, tape the ends together to create a cylindrical tube by holding both ends flat on the table and taping on the inside. Do not overlap the edges. Okay, this part's really important. So um, let me use this one here to show you. So you're gonna take these two ends. See, if you take these two ends and you overlap them, what's gonna happen to the diameter of your circle, okay? It's going to um, decrease that diameter of the circle, right? And then you're not gonna have circles that are the same, you won't be able to stack them. So it's super important that they take those two ends flat on the table, okay? They're gonna match those two ends perfectly like that, pretend that this is flat, so much easier to do when it's flat. And then they're gonna take that tape that's spread out on the table, and they're going to tape the inside there so that it's perfectly flat. Now, when that happens, you're gonna end up with a shape like this. <laughs> Little teardrop, it's kind of cute, but it's not the shape that we want for our totem pole. So, um, after a little bit of experimentation, I discovered that this is where these craft sticks and these cardboard strips come in. That if you take, let me try the cardboard one here, take one of these cardboard strips and the directions say, in fact, let me just read it to you. Um, number six, glue a cardboard strip over the tape and hold together with two paper clips. So you're gonna put a little bit of white glue on here and you're gonna glue it inside there. Okay, I don't know how you can see that in there. Okay, kind of like that. Can you see that? They're gonna glue that on there. And then they're gonna take these large paper clips and they're going to, just like I did here, can you see they're going to um, paper clip that on. And what's gonna happen is that's just gonna hold the, the cardboard strip there until it dries. And then when it dries, you can just take off those um, paper clips and you can see that's in there. And you can see how beautifully round and perfect that is for our totem pole, okay? So, um, then the next step is hand your design to the station facilitator who will add it to our collaborative totem pole. Okay, so this is the fun part because now we get to build the totem pole. So once you have your, let me um, do this, let me stick this on here, stick this on there. So I have two to show you. Um, this is where your packing tape comes in, real strong uh, packing tape, because you're going to line up, let me put this down here like that, okay. So what, what made this kind of easy is that they had that, remember they have that um, line of symmetry drawn? Okay, that pencil line right there? Okay, that's what you're gonna be lining up on all of your totem pole sections. So let's see if you can see, well, you probably can't see, but here's a line right there, and then you could see that line right there. So I just very carefully matched those two lines, kind of like that, and then I took some tape and I went around, I taped it on the inside first. And then once that was taped like that, it was easy for me to then take this, they're not taped, it might be a little bit harder, and lay it down on the table and then finish taping on the inside. And I started taping um, from this, I went around in that direction first, and then I went around in this direction a little bit because of what happens is if you're gonna have any margin, if you're going to have any leftover um, a space, it's going to show up in the back. In other words, if it doesn't quite totally match at the end, then that little leftover spot will be in, in, in the back. Okay, so that's why you want to tape it in this direction a little bit first, a little in that direction, and then finish going around as much as you can. But you can see here how beautiful they look, and actually, they're almost all perfectly um, the same size. So, and then you can take it up as, as, as far um, as you want. Um, okay, so once that part was done, if they wanted to, oh, and by the way, can you see some of the detail in this? I mean, how creative are some of these kids, right? I mean, look at this. We've got um, 
a, a lot of three-dimensional stuff going on here too that I totally was not um, expecting in in these designs. So and um, I don't know if you can see this one over here. Not exactly symmetrical. This was um, one of our little preschoolers um, who was there with uh, his brother and um, he created that. And you know what? That the fact that he was doing it and getting involved in it and participating is good enough for me. So um, I love that it's a part of um, our totem pole as well. Okay, so then there's um, these math, um, to tie in a little bit of the math, there's these totem pole um, activity questions. And if you, you're familiar with our kits, you know that we organize our stations beginning, intermediate, and advanced. So I wanted to keep it consistent and do that with this project. So at the beginning level, um, it says, and beginning level is kind of loosely kindergarten, first grade, or, or TK um, one. Describe the shapes you used in your design. Can you find a shape that has exactly four sides? How about five sides? Did you include any rectangles or triangles? And now we're getting them to think about shapes and geometry, right? Um, and then it says, look around the room. Can you find objects that have mirror symmetry? One line of symmetry. And of course, if you really think about it, there's a lot of objects um, in our environment that have mirror symmetry. Okay, at the intermediate level, if the poster board strip is 24 inches long and you need to divide it into three equal sections lengthwise, how long will each section be and how did you figure it out? Now, they've already figured it out at this point, right? But now it's the how did you figure it out part that's really important to get them to think through the steps um, that they needed to do um, in order to get that the answer. At the advanced level, if the length of the poster board strip is 24 inches and the width is 6 inches, what is the total area of the strip? So now they're getting to length times width equals area, right? And this might be a good time um, that scrap paper is going to come in handy. Um, how did you figure it out? Use scrap paper if necessary. Then, if we want our totem pole to be 6 feet tall, how many 24 inch by six inch strips will we need? How many for a seven foot tall? How about eight foot tall? Do you notice a pattern? Can you explain the pattern? So there is a pattern that emerges when they do this, when they figure um, out how many strips they will need for um, increasing the turn pole by a foot. And then I always like to include a challenge um, as well as often as I can um, for those who, who like to take on challenges. And we had several kids who took on this challenge. Determine the volume of our totem pole if the pole is seven feet tall. Reminder, the formula for the area of a circle is area equals pi times the radius squared. Now just a tip on this one. Some students um, used their ruler to kind of figure out what the diameter was um, of this, and then of course divide that and have to find out their radius, okay? So you, you might come up with a little bit different answers depending on how they, they measure that. Um, and then some were calculating uh, the circumference and, and um, dividing it by pi and so forth um, to figure that out. Um, but it's a good exercise um, for them to do and again, that's where the scrap, scrap paper comes in, and we got some really good, um, super fun um, answers um, on that. And it's uh, it's quite a sense of accomplishment to figure out something that's a challenge like that and to take it on and do it. So you can see it was a super fun um, project. And as the totem poles were being um, built uh, during the event, kids were getting really, really excited. And of course, it draws more people over because they want to get theirs um, in there as well. So uh, if you do the project, enjoy it.